Katana 100 head. The other comparable amps, I think, in this market are the THR, the Yamaha, which is really good. And then the Spark, I think, is, is worthy of someone's attention as well. Uh, this is probably a little more serious. Um, workhorse studio type instrument. You can play live and loud with it, or you can play with the internal speaker. It hooks up to your DAW and is amazing, which the THR is harder to work with a little bit. But then there's the Spark, which for the college student is probably the most amazing thing out there. Super fun deal. So let's get into this and just think about it a little bit. So the front panel has four big screws that you can take out, but it still won't come out because there's one more in the back here. And the only way to get that out, this one, it's got a, it's a stud with a nut on it. The only way to get that out is by taking the components out first. You got to remove the chassis before you have access to that. So don't yank on it a bunch or you'll break it like I did, and you'll have to glue that little sword symbol back in. This is the symbol for katana, which means sword or cuts right through, you know? So this gets us to the front anyway, and no big deal. I mean, and I thought about gluing that on upside down to make it one of a kind, but then figured, why be that guy? All right, so we got four screws out here, but remember this one's only accessible from the back. To get the guts out, you have to take four screws out right here that you'd expect, four little black screws, and then these two top screws come right out. Not quite this easy. You do have to use a wrench or a screwdriver, some sort of tool. But then uh, this whole unit is going to come right out about this far, and then you've got to reach in here and undo the speaker wires um, just by reaching in there. But they pull off relatively easy, not too big a deal. All right, so we'll come back to the electronics part in just a second. But first, the whole reason I took this apart was to look at possible upgrades to the speaker, the front here. This is a five inch Roland speaker rated at eight ohms. And it's really for all intensive purposes, it's really great. But you know, the, there's always the desire to have more. This is a five inch speaker. There's room in here for a six inch speaker, although with the dimension of a six inch speaker, the mounting dimension is about 6.5. So you'd have to do some trimming or use a offset ring to seal it up to mount to. But I thought it'd be fun to put two speakers in here. Even if they were five inch, Eminence makes some small five inch. Eminence also makes a Cajun six inch speaker, mm -hmm. Cajun, which is good. Um, but to t put two in here, you'd have to have both at four ohms and run them in series. But, you know, like with anything, engineers get paid a lot to design things. And they sometimes don't get it right, but most often they get it right. So this is probably going to sound about as good as it's going to get. Could you do pretty well with a speaker upgrade? Probably, I don't know, but I just wanted to look at it. There's the back of the speaker. It's got a pretty hefty magnet on it. 40 watt, little rolling speaker, eight ohms. And they're using the whole cavity here as a resonance chamber. And this is the port to help release the bass um, from the cabinet. So the speaker's driving quite a bit, but you have this bass reflex port right here. Um, now, another drawback of putting another speaker here is, well, not drawback, because it would probably be great, but you have a huge heat sink that sits on that side. This dude right here, oh my gosh. When was the last time you saw an iron like that? And this is hooked to one integrated circuit. Now, I would have figured to get up to 100 watts that they would have had four CMOS uh, little amps in there or something. But it, from what I can see, this is in fairly small pins. I would expect it 
higher, uh, larger pin sizes, but it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pin IC, one, just one IC that's down in there. And oh my gosh, to get that kind of power out of one chip is pretty outstanding. And it's probably a pair. There's probably two fifties sandwiched together in a common ground. Uh, I imagine it's some sort of CMOS device, but it's hooked, it's clamped in there pretty good. We've got a thermal disc, we got a big fat heat sink on the back of that IC, and it's probably a, a matched pair of CMOS um, components in there with a common ground for seven pins. All right, so, but look at this. Now, you still could do this, but you'd have to either cut these fins away to allow for the magnet of the new speaker to sit in there and i don't think that would be such a big deal this thing is so massive and these fins are so far away from the heat source that i really don't think that would be too big a deal you could cut these back you need about an extra inch of clearance and or you could mount the speakers with offset rings Uh, right up in here, you could have a ring, a three-quarter inch or half inch ring. Um, they make them different sizes, but rings that fit right under the speaker so that your speakers can be up higher um, in case you have depth challenges when you're mounting it in a car door or you know anywhere else. So it's doable, and then I thought it'd be cool to have the grill, a steel grill, that diagonal iron steel grill stuff over it so that the speakers were exposed. You could take the uh, Katana, Boss Katana emblems off this, because they just unscrew, unless you break one. Um, but you could take these off and mount them to whatever you put in there, right? So I thought that would give it kind of a steampunk look. It would look pretty aggressive. Um, but I don't know. I'll we'll have to just kind of see. I'm still investigating speakers, but Eminence does make 6-inch, and there are some 5-inch out there. Now, inside here, I'm not going to get inside here, but it is like uh, looking at a Google map of L.A. down in there. It is full of cans, integrated circuits, chips, ICs, um, it goes on and on and on forever. There's a huge power resistor. That white thing right back there is a stand-up um, power resistor. So that's pushing a lot of power. There's probably a couple of big cans in there as well, but I don't know, and I'm not going to take this any further apart because it's just going to be full of the same again and again and again big heavy transformer copper plates looks nice all right but boss does stuff right boss roland they do stuff right and um like i said i have screwed up more than one thing thinking i could improve upon it but that's what engineers get paid for every once in a while the hacks out there uh, do something a little better they figure it out because this stuff is mass produced and they always don't take the time to look at every single issue. They have blocks of circuit already done and they put those blocks together and do what necessary tweaks they have to, but they don't take the time to really tune it like they could, like an amp doctor could. All right, so that's inside this thing. Pretty cool, easy enough to take apart. Um, but, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have two speakers out here in the front instead of just one? Um, you'd be pushing twice as much air, so I think it would be louder. Might not be a lot louder, but speakers that come with stuff are often uh, not the best. Uh, lots of times you benefit from a speaker upgrade so i don't know we'll see but now that i know what's in there i can start making some informed decisions all right that's a look inside the katana old guy jamming is out see you next time